Hey, welcome to Truth Unbound. I'm Walter Swaim. Just last month, Pastor Steve Furtick of Elevation Church, well, he made this statement on Twitter, which originally came from what he said in one of his sermons. And here's what he said. Following Jesus doesn't change you into something else. It reveals who you've been all along. What would it be like to see the you that God sees? Well, this was taken down later, but was quickly screenshotted before that could happen and responded to by many. The problem with it was that it is a patently false teaching. Um, and then in another case, for instance, Hank Hanegraaff, the Bible Answer Man, uh, recently said that the serpent in the garden that spoke to Eve wasn't literal or real, but a metaphor. He also said the snake was used, uh, or the snake used mind telepathy to talk to Eve. Now, this is that's for another podcast to come, but you could still see the serpent as being literal, as the author of Genesis intended, obviously, without under, understanding it as a snake as we see one now. But it was a real serpent-like being in form, and it obviously did talk to her. In other words, more of the prominent teachers of the Bible today are denying or cherry-picking the literal method of reading, interpret, reading and interpreting the Bible. And this is very dangerous as it affects God's truth as he intended it to be understood for all of us. So just how do you discern, the Bible reading believer, how do you discern and tell between true and false teaching? Well, God shows us easily and simply how to do that. And that's what we're going to do on Truth Unbound today and right now. Well, here we are sitting down together once again around God's Word and taking the issues of today, things in life, theology, the church, the media, and comparing what God's truth says to that. We know that God's truth relates to everything in life by command or principle. And so that's why you and I are together. And let's share this with others. In fact, if you would click like on this video, subscribe and all notifications. If you're listening to the audio only, you would hit uh, follow and like as well. And then if you would do this, if you would share this with everyone you can, uh, text them the link or share it with them in an email or whatever or on your social media, and uh, let's get this family of Truth Unbound to grow even more. Well, all right, let's head, a go let's head right into uh, what we're discussing today. Being able to discern what is true and what is not true as it comes to God's Word is so very important. Uh, we, we need to know God's truth well. And we also need to know how to defend it well, to make sure what is taught is true and to avoid being a part of what pretends to be of Jesus, but in reality it isn't. Jesus warned us himself when he said this in Matthew chapter 7, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. And then he says this in first John, or I'm sorry, John says this in first John chapter four, verse one, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. And so here uh, in these verses, just two small parts, we see these repeated warnings from Jesus to John in the Bible of about false teaching and to be aware of it and to deny it and to protect God's word against it and the church against it. In fact, Jesus said here that we can recognize it's false because of what that teacher puts out, the fruit, both in teaching and also in their lifestyle. Today we're focusing on the tests that God gives us to apply to any teaching to determine if it's true or false. And here we're going to look at them as in the form of questions to apply to what you hear or read from a Bible teacher. And here they are, okay? The three questions to ask whenever you hear or read the Bible being taught. Number one, is Jesus still God? Number two, is God's word still unchanged? And number three, is the gospel still the same? You see, this is one of the main struggles from the beginning in the early church and has continued on and still does today. Men like the historic man called Marcion had false teaching about Jesus as to whether he was God or one of many gods or not the same as the God of the Old Testament. 
Today, few teachers who pretend to be teachers of the word just outright deny Jesus as God. Few will do that unless they're part of a cult or another entirely different religion. They'll say he was God in the flesh, but just as other men have also been the same. You hear that a lot today in uh, progressive, the progressive Christian movement. Um, the denial of Jesus and his divinity also comes in saying we can be like God or we already are little gods that just need to come out, uh, making us the same as Jesus, meaning he's a created being just as we are created beings that become God. Others will say Jesus set aside being God so he could be a man, which is completely wrong. Jesus, though he self-limited his power at times, and for different reasons, he never ceased being fully God while being fully man. Otherwise, even his death on the cross also was a worthless act because he was just a man and not God, the perfect one who died in our place. And so that is an important part. Number one is, is Jesus still God? Is he divine? The next question is asked to ask, is God's word still unchanged? In Revelation chapter 22, John gives this stern warning from God. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. This warning is not just for the book of Revelation but the prophecy or teaching of God in general as it is written received, written and received in God's word. You see, God's entire book ended with the writings of Revelation. He's not revealing more things. And in no way is it to be altered or changed or added to or portions of it removed. So again, the cults, for instance, such as Mormonism and Jehovah, Jehovah Witnesses, well, they directly and obviously change things or add to the Bible to make their own holy books. So it's an outright denial of this warning we just read. Others, though, and the majority are more indirect or smooth about how this is done, especially in evangelicalism. Not by changing or altering the words themselves all the time, but by changing how the words are in understood or how they're interpreted. We see this today, for instance, in the old earth creationist and those who believe in a local, not worldwide flood, or others such as what we read from Hank Hanegraaff about the snake in the garden not being a literal being. And so what they will do is they'll just kind of wave their magic wand over it and say it's a metaphor or symbol of something else. And once you say that kind of thing without biblical verification of it, then you can make the Bible say whatever you feel or think it says because, well, it's your metaphor now. Or they take worldly philosophies such as evolution or critical race theory and weave it through some Bible verses to make it sound legit and requiring our obedience to it because it's God's word, as though they were the actual commands of God when they really aren't. So if the Bible's words are literally being changed or added to or their meaning is being changed by a modern teacher, then be aware of it and shut it down and receive the word correctly taught only. And now the last question to ask yourself is this, is the gospel still the same? Paul said this and gave this stern warning in these opening words in his book to the Galatians or his letter to the Galatians chapter 1 verses 6 through 9. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. You can't be more clear or direct than that. What is the gospel then? Well, Paul wrote that out for us from how it was given to him from the first believers in Jesus and from Christ himself. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the first verses, he says, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel 
which I preach to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which also you are saved. If you hold fast that word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain, for I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You see, the gospel is simply this. It's Jesus crucified, buried, and risen again, risen again the third day to save, from, to save us from our sins. Jesus died for our sin and rose again alive. The command is to believe in the gospel, these facts about Jesus, for your own life to be saved. Today, the gospel is being constantly altered, either into, for instance, a, a social gospel. In other words, the gospel is caring for and curing poverty. But that is not the gospel message. It is a byproduct of the love from believing and being changed by the gospel, but it is not the actual definition, message, and purpose of the gospel. Also today, we see it changed into a social justice gospel, inserting things such as worldly philosophies like critical race theory and intersectionality into the message so that the gospel is about righting the wrongs done to people in society. Now again, loving and treating people fairly and equally is a product of the love we are to show all people because we're changed by the love of Jesus within. But it is not the gospel message itself. To change the gospel, even with the best of intentions, is not tolerated by the Lord. And the believer needs to be very careful of this kind of false teaching. Turn from it, run from it, if you will, and tell folks the only true good news of Jesus and to turn from sin and believe in him. Oh, there's so much more, but God tells us and gives us these three tests to apply to any teaching we hear or read in, in the church or radio, on the radio or in a podcast, whatever it is. And it's this. Number one, is Jesus still God? Number two, is God's word still unchanged? And number three, is the gospel still the same? This is what Jude wrote in verse three. He said, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly. Fight for it deeply, truly, richly, for the faith which was once delivered for all to the saints. Let me read that once again. Jude 3. I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. You see, we do, as believers, followers of Jesus, and members of, bodies, uh, body, uh, members of the body of Christ and of his church, we have to draw the red line right there around the truth of God and make sure it remains true to what he established as his truth from the very beginning. It does not mean that we have to be ugly or hateful to those who promote these kind of teachings, but they cannot be tolerated. It means we have to be solid and firm in knowing God's truth and in not being deceived and not letting others be deceived by it. And we are to protect his truth from the attacks of Satan and the world, to devalue it and to destroy it. When God's truth is watered down or altered completely, it ceases to be from God. And it ceases from being the truth of God that saves and guides us to him and his love. Well, I really do hope this helps you. And and if it did, then click like, subscribe, and follow, and share it with others who desire, desire to know God's truth for life. His truth is not bound by anyone or anything, but stands alone and is our light in the darkness, and we are to know it and defend it and share it. So follow Jesus, and you'll always follow the truth.